Live. Welcome, Dr. Sergei Shealy Sorin, and of course, the one and only original Dr. Norm Shealy. <laughs> Hello, Dad. How are you? Good Fine, to have you. Thank you. Yes, for he is my dad, by the way. Yes, uh, father son team. And I'd like to introduce and bring this topic of conversation uh, a wonderful opportunity from crisis to opportunity, as a matter of fact. Leah Allen Holistic Success Story. And there's a lot to say, very little time, only one hour. Leah, we are honored. Please. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be on the show with you and Dr. Sheely. Um, so my story just kind of started, um, you know, being a mom of four boys, um, kind of trucking along with, with all of my career things and going through, you know, typical life events, um, kind of all, a lot of things at once, divorce, moving across the country, changing my career, you know, mom was sick, all, all the things that were going on. Um, in 2014, I was uh, suddenly started having seizures. And, um, you know, really the medical community couldn't figure it out. Um, so for three or four months, we just went from doctor to doctor, hospital to hospital. And, you know, a number of different diagnoses, fibromyalgia or different syndromes, they just couldn't figure it out, um, throw a bunch of medicine at me. And that wasn't working, making things worse. So I ended up finding a doctor in Washington um, in March of 2015, got a Lyme diagnosis, uh, chronic Lyme. And um, my seizures at that time, I was having multiple grand mal seizures a day. Um, and they just, they, they even couldn't figure out how to get me well. So um, they put me on a 28 month protocol, um, antibiotic protocol, pretty intensive. And um, I was just um, not functioning. I was not functioning. You know, the whole typical, the brain fog. Um, some days I really couldn't read or function. Um, if you would ask me a question, I mean, I could really process that, but not, not process enough to answer you. Um, it was a little overwhelming. So there was a lot going on. Um, after the 28 months of antibiotics, they considered me to be in remission. And um, a friend of mine who also had Lyme, she, when they put her in remission, she always called it remission-ish because she was not well. You know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't at the high level of functioning like I should have been. Um, still, again, it got four boys and it was just a lot. Um, so um, after being in remission for about a year and just trying to be well, even in remission, I had tremors all the time. My head would shake. My hands would shake. I was on neurological medicine to try to help curb that and nothing was helping. Um, but then I started having some seizure activity again and they said, oh, you're not in remission anymore. And Basically, they, you know, said this is a declining problem and um, get your things, you know, situated because we're probably walking you to your grave. And it was pretty much a miracle that I had gotten into what they called remission in the first place. And um, at that point, I just realized, you know, the medicine made me sicker faster than whatever this was we couldn't figure out was doing. And I decided um, the medicine was killing me faster than the illness was. And I was just desperate to get help. So I am, um, you know, if you ask the angels for help and you expect an answer, you're going to get an answer. So I was crying out to the Lord and just, I've, there, this isn't, it can't be it. This, this can't be what it is. And, and um, my little one, I was reading, um, found a lot of encouragement with Mary Magdalene and Teresa of Avila at the time and um, was watching some, you know, spiritual guidance from Carolyn Mace. And so my, my little one cuddled up next to me and he said, um, how are you, my Mary Magdalene? And I looked at him and he said, or as I like to call you, my Magdalene. And I thought, you know, I, I can't submit to, I'm walking myself to the grave. I can't, I can't. That was my motivation right there. I said, Lord. So that night I asked for answers. And the next morning I was watching a video and, um, Norm was on the video. She had, Carolyn Mays had said something about him and I thought, oh my God, I've got to find him. And so I, I found him <laughs> immediately. I had been following her videos for probably eight months at the time. And, and that had really um, helped me a lot. So I found Norm and um, that was in 2020 and I was desperate and um, he got me well, you know, he put me on different kind of protocol. He put me on the PIMP device. I, you know, have, I do this every day 
Um, I, I do my bliss oils every day. Um, my, all my nutraceuticals, the youth, youth essentials and chili greens and all of that. Um, I started that immediately and within, you know, 30, 60, 90 days, my tremors stopped. I wasn't on neurological medication anymore. I was able to go off of that. Um, blood pressure was coming down, all of the things I didn't even realize, you know, I, I had been losing hair, but it had been for so long. I didn't know, you know, so that all was, um, coming back and I just had a new lease on life. You know, it was, it was amazing. So, um, he gave me, you know, the tools that we need for, um, our human right, our birthright is to be well, you know, we have the choice to be healthy and we don't have that availability um, with the way our society is set up right now. And we just don't either. We're not educated um, to it. We're not informed. We just don't know. And um, if I wasn't desperate enough to be well with my children, I wouldn't be here. You know, I, I would never have looked for Norm because life would have just been going on the way that it was. So at that time, I realized, um, you know, we really need to not be chasing this um, what a friend of mine says, you know, the crisis model of of health and wellness, where we're only chasing illness and crisis and ailments and symptoms, that we need to be uh, mitigating that and eliminating that altogether, you know, and and how do we do that? And so I I started thinking about that, like, why am I the lucky one to have found Norm across the country? And because I could, you know, I I, I was stumbled across him, you know, I mean, I would have been doctor to doctor to doctor even still. And so I started thinking, you know, how can I make this different for other mothers? How can I make this different for parents who have children with Lyme or autism or whatever situation it is, you know, we should have access to these modalities and this, um, this way of, of healthy living. And we should have, at, at a minimum, we should be informed and have availability to access these things. And um, how, so I started thinking, you know, how can I inform people? So again, you ask the angels questions and they're going to bring them to you. So I started having dreams and visions of um, an all organic cafe with, you know, specific lighting and specific acoustics, you know, um, so that when people are walking in, they're being bathed with the lights and the acoustics are, you know, the sound therapy. They don't, they're walking in and they're being healed with you know, certain mist water that they're breathing in and the food is all organic and, and healing. But then I started thinking, you know, how, how can I um, access everyone if they don't find my cafe, right? So then I started thinking of a healing room and then I started, you know, my, my visions and things started expanding. And then I started thinking of neighborhoods and communities. And, um, you know, um, when Yeshua says, what you do for the least of these you do to me. What does the least of these mean? And so anyone who's in need of, if it's just a glass of water, what are we doing for the least of these? And that's people who are homeless, people who are, you know, seeking help and healing. The majority of these I can imagine have some kind of illness or ailment that they, they just don't know how to fix it. So if we're housing them and feeding them, we're not really addressing the issue. And so if we have a new approach of that, um, healing and restoration centers where the lighting is specific and the sound is specific and the colors they're exposed to are specific and the food is all organic and they have access to all these energy healing modalities, then we're restoring people, we're restoring humanity. So, you know, it goes from, you know, being sick and desperate and then now how can I change other people's lives and so it's um, I'm I'm grateful to have gone through what I've been through because I wouldn't I wouldn't know how to heal someone else if I didn't go through the suffering myself I wouldn't know what they're going through and I wouldn't know how to heal them but because I have done that for myself now I can show other people how to do that I can walk them through that so as they're ready and as they find me then then we can do that and then you know companies that we invest in now um, you know I ask God again you know Lord give me a voice I'm I'm one person. And maybe I'm not as educated as one would be, you know, that, that maybe government officials would listen to me or, or people would listen to me, but give me the platform to be your voice. And suddenly, you know, we're um, investing in a genetics company where we're proving up these things. We have a team of scientists that are excited about color healing and their, you know, sound therapy and things. And we're seeing what that does to us at the level of our DNA 
and what food does to us at the level of our DNA and not just food, but organic food and high organic food. And, and so, you know, the Lord has really given me a platform now to, you know, put things out there to make these modalities accessible and, and affordable. And um, if we put businesses around these things, it's not about making revenue or about making money, but then philanthropic money can go into that and spread that all over the world to people who don't have access to it. So it's really broadened my thoughts. It's broadened my my visions for life and for humanity completely. So I'm I'm ever grateful to Norm, of course, and and Carolyn Mace also, and and Serhi, you have come in and and just helped me so much. And um, I'm just I'm grateful to be here. I'm honored to be on your show, uh, Leah. Uh, it's a you are incredible. And when we say from crisis to opportunity, wow, mm -hmm. we really mean from crisis to opportunity. And what an opportunity. Uh, we talk about, uh, mm -hmm. now, before we, before we get there, now your mm -hmm. childhood, your, yeah. your, the, how you grew up. And, you know, so now you can, we, get, we have a sense of where you're going and what you've been through. But let's go back a little bit and just uh, address some of the factors that you've already overcome to, to begin with and how that impacts things. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, as, as a um, young girl, we, we were in and out of poverty here and there where there were times we didn't have food. And, you know, everybody has a story, right? And these things impact our health. They impact our neurological wiring. And I didn't know that, of course, until Norm taught me. Um, and, and now I can teach others and, and anybody who will listen, I'll tell it to. But, um, you know, these, these events in life that we think we just pass them over, I mean, it's, it's not the fault of my parents, of course. They did what they could with what they were given, you know, and, and they came out of different levels of poverty and struggle as well. And um, so just overcoming um, different things like not having food in the house occasionally, you know, and, and um, different living environment. And we were in and out of foster care for different reasons um, periodically here and there and little group homes here and there. And so we were experiencing exposed to a lot of those things. And, you know, that too, to talk about opportunity, it's really um, encouraged me so much to look at these facilities and these families that are coming through, the immigrant families, again, the least of these, right? Not the least of these in their capabilities or they, their abilities, but the least of these in, in, in their need currently. And um, so when they're going through these um, government facilities, these government run homes, we're doing what we can. I don't think anything is sinister or, or um, wrong. And, and, you know, I mean, we can all have our own, a deeper conversation about those kinds of things, but I do think we're doing all that we can as a community with what we know. But if we can expand our vision on that, you know, we have the problem. Um, nobody really has a bigger solution right now, but going through poverty at particular times or going through um, not having um, guidance or counseling or coaching in different areas of life. Um, those are struggles. When you live in survival, you know, when, an, when an, an antelope is, you know, running from the lion and uh, 20 minutes later when survival need is over, they're back. Yeah, shake it yeah up they're and, good. You know, yeah, they're yeah. drinking from the water hole again. They've forgotten all about it. But we will relive that over and over in our head. And we don't even mean to, you know. But PTSD, just, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, really, it is. And so we don't yeah. mean to do that. But but it becomes our dreams. And, and in our, you know, it's trying to heal us through talking about it or through getting it out there. And then, and then we just stuff it right back down, you know. All those things affect our neurological wiring. And, and so I do think that all played a big role in and um, getting me to where I was for whatever that was, you know, there were a number of things that piled up from beginning to where it was. Um, but again, you know, going through that, I, I have a heart for kids that are hungry. We're, we're right now talking to government officials about how to change the school lunch program, you know, building gardens, building orchards on every campus. Um, you know, the socioeconomic impact of that um, with violence. I mean, if I get into a school system and just change their cafeteria and the environment of their cafeteria, including their lighting, their water, what we're growing their food in, what kind of food we're feeding them, what, what kind of water they're drinking, the molecular state of the water they're drinking, that all has a, a significant impact on their health and on their healing. So if I get, you know, nurses records from the year prior for a student that's diabetic, 
And then, you know, we all know on the Dean Ornish diet, you know, we can turn on and turn off these genetic markers that are, that are affecting us with food in 30 to 90 days. And so if I can impact, you know, the kids, we can measure that on previous years. Um, you know, how many times did little Jane Doe go to the nurse for her insulin shots the year previous? And then within that 30, 60, 90 days, did that start minimizing? And then after that, did she need this shot at all? You know, um, or the child who may have been, um, <laughs> the child who may have been um, what they would call problematic. No child is problematic. But if their brain isn't working well, listen, I can be problematic in, in an hour if you feed me wrong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and this you is know? A functional medicine, Leah, absolutely. Same yeah. concept. Got brain connection, got hormones, right. got uh, autonomic nervous system, stress response. Uh, exactly. Everything. Yeah, GI. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so going, you know, back to the childhood thing, it, it really um, exposed me to the need. Um, if I didn't go through foster homes, I wouldn't know what it's like to go through those foster homes. I wouldn't know what they're feeding those kids there. I wouldn't know the lighting and the, you know, the environment. And so um, I think we can we can change that as a community. And then even the clothes they're wearing. Yeah, go. I'm going to say mm -hmm. something here. And sure. I'm just gonna, again, this is going to sound a little bit of out of the medical, but uh, I think it's, you know, we are holistic. What is holism? Spirit, soul mind right. control center limbic system you can go into all kinds of descriptions we have a neurosurgeon here preventer of tens unit they're still core stimulator but control center bottom line yeah. then patterns uh physical patterns uh, uh physical health uh, lifestyle <laughs> what we do what we don't do uh, and so on and so forth and, and i would like to say it's anything but integrative that's mm -hmm. right i i i i've used foul words when they call it in well but they, what dr Shilly is referring to is is the nomenclature and, and i think the world holy the word holistic has not been uh, has not been killed yet but the word integrative has been destroyed entirely but yeah. again it, it's how we use the use the words uh, and uh, you know what is holism so i guess so this you know back to the same idea you know spirit soul mind body the body is everything physical and this is where our our focus in the world is this is where we see poverty this is where we see disease where we see uh, uh you know chem chemical pills from for mood and so on and so forth uh, whereas uh the holistic aspect is that god doesn't make junk and i'm just gonna say it that way we do we we right. do as a society we make junk yeah. as humans we, we make junk as, as parents and again non, non, non intentional why because we're following the system we don't know yeah. any better we make junk in the school and educational systems we make junk in the healthcare system which is a system well, it's it's a it's it's a racketeering you know um organization here with yeah. pharmaco pharmaco ma mafia so to speak uh that you have some a few other words you may want to say on that. <laughs> uh, but you know but again it's a system don't blame the system again people good people work within within in the system and it does the best it can but it's a model it's a business yeah. model so ho the holism is literally addressing the human on, a, on an entire level leah you mentioned something very powerful working with your mind working with emotions feelings this is where self-regulation biofeedback autogenic training biogenics uh, you've done those programs and i think i believe you're you're the mastery level you're the black belt <laughs> level how what i would call basically you can just boom right, right there you live it you're, you're you're the embodiment you're the success tell us about that well you know when when it whatever dr Sheely told me to do let me tell you, I was ready to do it. And if I wasn't sick enough, I don't know that I would have really followed through completely. I mean, I really did have the gift of desperation. I was desperate. To, it yeah. is a gift, you know, and, it, you know, they say when, until someone reaches their bottom, sometimes they're just not ready. And what I want to change for families is they don't have to reach their bottom. They can see where other people have come to their bottom. And so, you know, yeah, the autogenic training. I mean, I went through the whole course. I went through every module, I mean, meticulously, every video I could get a hold of. Um, I wanted to be educated in every way. What what additional can I do to just help me to help me? You know, I mean, Dr. Sheely could have done like anyone else. Yeah, offer surgery or offer a pill, you know, and, and then go on about your business and call me in a week, call me in a month. But he gave me choices. You know, he gave me access to my own healing. And, and, that was, it's just powerful when you give someone their power back and, you know, going back to the food system and stuff. So we were on food stamps and we were on the, 
you know, the school program and, and it's, if you can't afford to eat anything else, you're forced to eat what you're eating. And, and I can measure brainwave activity of a child that I've fed things that I've eaten. And, and I understand, you know, there's, there's affordability of the nation right now. And, and there's, um, certain things that, that, you know, okay, we, organic food shouldn't be so expensive. So let's negotiate with the organic food companies and say, look, we're going to, we're going to make it to where only, we're only going to buy organic food. So then we're going to increase the demand for what you have. So you're going to decrease the the cost. There's a business model here. There, there are options, there's resolution. And so, yeah, you know, if, um, I, I, on days that I don't, feel like I have time for the autogenic training or, you know, now I do it two or three times a week, but I did it twice a day. I mean, let me tell you when I was very, very sick, I was, I was doing six hours of meditations a day because I was just trying to not have seizures and, and it was helping so much that it was almost like an addiction. I mean, if someone gets addicted to drugs, they're really chasing what this autogenic training and this pimp device and, and wellness does because that's a high to be healthy. You know, it is, it is, it is high on life and it is high on thought process. It's high on visions and, and dreams of a future. And, um, you don't have that when you're in bed, a vegetable, you know? So, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fully, fully in the present, fully, fully active, fully optimized. You're, you're a perfect example of that. And this is, a, yeah, I can think of a, a, well, better person to talk to about this. Now, PEMF device with the seizures and everything else. Uh, can you mm -hmm. talk about that? Because I think that was, you and I have had multiple discussions on that. What would you? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, when I started wearing the, the, the PMF device and I, I, do, I wear it now, I was telling Norm, I, I, I wear it for meetings. I have my kids wear it when they're doing their homework, when they're studying. So when I first started wearing it, you know, you, you, you um, not, not intentionally, but you, you kind of like, okay, is this really going to work? You know, I mean, not, I, and again, if it was anyone other than Norm, I may have just put it aside, but I trusted him so much um, that I would have done anything. And so I'm like, if he's saying this is going to work, then I'm doing it. And it, it was, it was, I mean, night and day, I could, I could feel it when I would first start wearing it, but then gradually as I didn't need it as much, I wouldn't feel such a difference. And so you naturally start thinking, well, do I have to wear it today? Right. But then, so we go into COVID, we go into 2020, we're in lockdown. My kids come home, you know, they're stuck at home with me and here I am going through all these changes. And now I'm, I don't know, four to six months into what um, this is all happening for me. And I thought, well, I'm going to put my kids on the same treatment I'm on. If they're home all day long and this is working for me, I'm going to put my PEMF device on gamma when I'm, you know, at the time I'm working from home. So I'm writing scripts, um, writing movie scripts and things like that for the studio that we work with, business partner of ours. And um, so when I'm writing my creative mind, if I'd put that in gamma, I'm good. And, you know, when I need to go to sleep, I mean, I was on sleeping medicine or some kind of sleeping help, Benadryl, melatonin for, for 10 years prior yeah. to meeting Norm and started using this device on Delta at night. I've not been on sleeping medicine, not anything, not, not nothing. And so um, it's just, it's been so helpful in so many ways, but my kids, so I, I had them start wearing and I thought, you know, let me just see what it does for them. It, my thing was a bigger deal. I can see a drastic change, but a couple of my boys were struggling with school. They were struggling with their attention, you know, and um, that was for their whole lives. And so I start having them wear this. I start having them do the autogenic training in the morning. I had to do it at night. And then um, if they'd have a big test coming up, I'd have them do the brief autogenic training and I'd have them wear the PEMP device on gamma. And so their grades, I mean, it was two or three months I started, then I remembered to go back and look, but I was consistent with their diet because now I'm feeding them at home and everything and their grades are amazing. So now to this day, my 17 year old, who was the one who struggled the most, we had to hold him back a couple of times for reading. And he was just always in the classes where they just, you know, they were barely passing him along. They weren't sure how it was going. He's in honors classes in private school, which is, it, it's a hard curriculum already. And he's in honors classes. But then, um, you know, all the medical stuff, you, you don't think you can reverse illnesses. And 
when I, I'm hearing that, Dean Ornish, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, Norm, you know, all these things that we can really reverse these things. You don't, even if it's a genetic thing that your mom and dad gave you, well, my parents have diabetes, then I'm just going to get it. Actually, no. And and I'm telling you, I've got a genetics company. And now <laughs> I prove that up. <laughs> so, uh, now yeah. I have a voice. But um, so my- I'm glad you do. This is yeah. wonderful. Yes. So <laughs> my um, my 16-year-old had glasses and and in his- um, other side of his family, they, they have glasses and they go through iterations and they're, so he was getting more bigger, bigger, a bigger and bigger prescription. And so, um, about six months ago, he was complaining that his glasses were giving him a headache and he was, you know, going deeper and deeper into it. And he's been at the same eye doctor for a while. And, um, I said, well, baby, you know, you probably need a bigger prescription. That's kind of what they've been saying. And, you know, here I am now two and a half years into all this, and I'm still thinking along those lines, right? You know, so that's a deep rut. I wasn't even thinking that he wouldn't need glasses. So I take him to the ophthalmologist and they're like, he's 2020. He does not need glasses. (laughs) He said, what are you doing, mom? Like, this is the same doctor. And looking at his prescription, like, he does not need even reading glasses. And so, you know, we <laughs> those come, you know, some like, you know, they're they're all a living example of what it means to make this lifestyle change. And so it's it's interesting and it's exciting. You know, uh, Leah, I, the other thing that I think I just I'd like to say, because this is a true inspiration, because there's a lot of folks who have come through with illnesses, mm-hmm. uh, medical problems. Uh, and uh, they have succumbed to the label labels i am hypertensive i am uh, yeah. I, or i am a hypertension i am diabetes i'm, I'm speaking literally here i am cancer or uh, in other words uh, uh, or, or this so on and so forth and in their minds they're already defeated yeah now uh, this is the uh, this is where the game changer is this is a control center absolutely uh, now there was there a specific moment in time that it you just turned on and said boom i want to i'm in charge i'm running this operation there uh, was um yeah you know or was um, it gradual uh, so there, yeah, go ahead, please, yeah. yeah it was actually gradual i mean i i had um i found a, a um another doctor who was you know teaching about um meditation so I learned a lot about meditation and how to meditate. So I was really trying to fix things. That that was before I met Norm. I found Carolyn Mace and there was very much a spiritual aspect to all of this and and her inspirational videos. I mean, that's where I really started taking control to the best of my ability, to the best of my physical ability. And there's a certain point when your mind's not working, your mind's just not working. And so I could all day long try to grab hold of these things. But when I'm catatonic in bed at some point, I just, there's nothing I can do. And so, you know, finding norm and then, you know, following that and getting, getting a hold of things a lot easier, a lot better. Um, and then able to actually be able to do that. Um, I found, um, and some other research about water and, you know, talking to water and, and the, the, um, the frequency of energy where you can change the molecular structure of the water and that's measurable, you know? And, and so I actually, so then when I'm, I research, you know, Dr. Emoto and, and how, you know, the whole water study, right. And yes. I have my kids now, now my kid, I'm my kid's teacher now. So I'm having read books, Dr. Dr. Sheely's books. I'm having them read that's our school, <laughs> school room reading is oh, Dr. Emoto. Yes. You know, uh, so let's talk um, about that because people, uh, you know, this is we know what this is, but the, the audience might know. Uh, mm-hmm. th- would you like to start the conversation on that, uh, or uh, I'll jump in as well? Please, no, you go. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, so the this the work with water that we're talking about is mm-hmm. actually, um, I'll just summarize briefly. Uh, if you put uh, our feelings and emotions, motion, energy in motion. Now, the other thing to realize who are what is what are we made of literally of which element uh, it's uh, some people say 70 percent water it's, you know some, there's a range you know again you know what, what's considered healthy we are primarily h2o mm-hmm. and uh, with the experiments that, uh, that this wonderful gentleman performed uh, in japan by the way uh, <clears throat> it's uh, if you put if you label something as inert as water Water doesn't have brain wave. Water doesn't have, you know, it's 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 an, it's water, right? Uh, uh, makes seventy percent of who we are. Okay, love, 
another bottle or another container height and so on and so forth completely different structure yeah. Uh, so that's why, let's say, if I were if I were having a, a dinner time and dinner conversation, and, and it's a rough conversation, a lot of feelings, and emotions, you, you don't want to eat, you don't want to drink. There's a reason for that, and mm -hmm. I don't until we settle in because that's all that energy that's accumulating going in there, and then you're putting in your body. Yeah, just like every thought, feeling, and emotion. That's right. And we can extend to everything physical, food. Mm -hmm uh activity or lack of activity and just all the patterns that mental emotional psychological it's all a part of energy yeah isn't it? yeah you know and these things have been known for thousands of years and you know we are in a society where if we can't measure it and prove it it doesn't exist but you know technology is catching up with us now again and we're able to measure these frequencies and we're able to measure that molecular state and we're able to, uh. we're able to repeat that and that's where you can't separate spirit from mere material because it, the, the frequency and the energy is everything that makes up the material. So anything that has a molecular state that's measurable, we can, you know, water particularly is, is, is recordable. And so we can measure that. We can repeat that. And um, so, yeah, I started really changing my thought process and I, I would physically look at myself in the mirror and, and say, I love you. You know, if, if you don't hear, I love you from anyone else, you need to hear it from yourself because you need to hear it. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you are beautiful. You are worthy. You are good. I, I am this. And, you know, you're talking about people saying, I am can I am cancer. People will say that long before they get cancer because their mother had cancer <laughs> and their grandmother had cancer and their great grandmother had cancer. So obviously they're going to get it. No, they don't have to get it. They don't have to do that. And, and to speak that into their lives differently, I am healed. I am love. I am well. I am healthy, you know? And yeah, you're absolutely right. You speak those things into your life. You are recording that at the molecular level of your, the water in your body. And, you know, it's, it's critically important. Our thoughts are critically important. We live with ourselves. You know, if, if we say that a bully in school can impact a child negatively, and they might only see him twice a week in the hallway, what's a bully in your own mind going to do? Oh, you know, 24 seven. Yes. I mean, come <laughs> on, you know, you're bullying yourself all day long. You're not capable. You're not worthy. You're not going to be able to do it at any moment. And so, you know, it's a process and it takes time, but it's a process that's worth working toward because it's life changing. You know, if, if things like poverty are generational and wealth is generational, why is that? You know, and so health and healing is generational. We can start that now. It doesn't matter what my parents have given me. I can give my kids something different. Leah, yeah. break the chains, baby. Break the chains. <laughs> yeah. Let it yeah. go. Dead. You gotta in, go in, in addition to yeah. my favorite basic autogenic training, every thought is a prayer. Absolutely. Thinking sets in motion yes. spiritual forces to bring about change in body, mind, emotions, physical body, and companions. Yes. Mm. I listen to that meditation every single, I listen to that one more than the autogenic training now. Yeah. I listen to it everywhere. And it's just, it's, it's, it is critical. We need to understand our power and our abilities. And, um, you know, back to the water thing, it's, it's interesting. There are a lot of studies that are going on right now with um, um, studies with agriculture, um, with, with crops and things, but um, um, sacred water, you know, you, somebody goes to some, spring in California and submerge their autistic child in the spring water for an hour a day. And what is the, so that's like helping them symptomatically, you know, so how can we make that available to people who can't fly to California to submerge themselves in spring water, you know, so technology is really catching up to what we can do. And I think now that is my life mission. How can I bring uh, um, these things accessible to parents with children with autism or, or, or children with parents with Alzheimer's or whatever it is. How can we make it accessible and affordable? Amen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. One thing that I want to mention, and this is, again, I don't want to speak prematurely about things that are not haven't happened, but you and I are, well, not just you and I, but there's a <clears throat> number of people who are talking about a collaborative effort in your vision. Yes. And yes. Uh, 
part of our, literally everything you're saying is literally in, at the very heart of this of everything about real holistic doc uh dr shili myself uh, this is this is truly what we live for and we, like i said we've discussed a number of different options and again i, I don't want to let the bag you know, the cat out of the bag so to speak if that's the expression uh but uh, there is a number of projects that uh, you're working specifically in creating further biogenics uh, exercises and concepts for the kids for the children yes. and 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 the, and the specific populations that have that have certain needs that have not been addressed by society uh, yes it, and, and i know it's a work in progress but uh yes yeah we're very excited about all of it i've been working with an immunologist in california who has run an organization called in my hope which is an, um, a support group for parents with children with um schizophrenia or mm -hmm. autism or you know any kind of mental um ability in abilities um and so we've been working on multiple different modalities, um, the biogenics training and then the, the meditations, I think, are critical for children. Um, the sound therapy is, is easy and um, we need to make that accessible to the parents at, at a minimum to get symptomatic relief. You know, it can really change a child's life when they can retain their attention just a little longer or they don't have outbursts, you know, um, at, at no fault of their own. They're not behavior issues. Yeah, mm -hmm. Leah, uh, one thing that I want to talk about in terms of the difference between conventional and holistic, holistic functional, mm -hmm. by the way, the functional means you get to the root cause of things, which is usually addressing the gut, the GI system, gut, gut brain, uh, hormones, uh, neurochemicals, uh, uh, well, uh, the, I, well, there's I'll, I'll say the fancy word, but also keep it keep it also simple. Stress, also known as hypothalamic pituitary pituitary adrenal axis, mm -hmm. and then of course the balance between the cortisol and the DHEA, which is uh, you know the protective, and uh, most people burn out, uh, leading to well lots of different issues: metabolic, hormonal, adrenal, uh, and uh, toxicity, uh, autoimmunity lots of different issues that don't have to be and while conventional in a conventional world conventional model and again i, I just want to uh, let this be very clear I, I i was fuming there was a time that i when i when i realized when i saw the picture just bail was lifted over my head i was like what the heck again, I, like you can say certain things on the on, on the on the program here but <laughs> It was a. Uh, I said it in 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 the in the Russian basically because the English wasn't uh, you know didn't have <laughs> enough words or strong enough words. But uh, uh, you know it's just. Uh, but what uh, the thing is you know once you realize the folly of the whole thing and the entire the the, the, the matrix the lie and the, of what then you know, then there's no sense being upset anymore. It, it, it literally is what it is. The conventional system is a conventional system. Learn what that box has to contain. Get the best out of it. That's what I do. Yeah. If I need surgery, boom! I got specialists. I have people that I can call that we need to we need to refer for procedure. I do surgeries. I mean, minor surgeries, and orthopedic, you know, regenerative and stuff like that. I mean, there's a place and a time. There's a place and a time for evaluations, labs, things of that nature. There's a place and a time for for uh, everything. Literally, yeah. everything everything has a place. But 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 if you just you know if, if the idea is to go from disease to maintaining the disease that's not holy no that's not what that's not, that's not what dad taught me that's right that's not, uh, you know basically uh, you know this, this is dr shilly's model and this is what i'm grateful because i kind of you know I, and, and this is exactly what i stand for greatness absolutely and, and this is where you are so thank you thank yeah. you and you know there's a real place for for what what we around here call western medicine you know there's a real place for that and and um you know, but there's a real place for um, eliminating the need for that. You mm -hmm. know, if I have something broken, okay, we, let's, you know, I need help. But in terms of my, my brain health, my organs, my, you know, my ability to um, function properly and at the highest level, not just functioning and surviving, that's, we've got to get out of that. And after survival, thriving. That's success. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And you know, we've, and again, it just goes to accessibility, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. how can we make that happen? And, and, you know, going back to the projects that we're doing. Um, That's right. yeah. So in the, in the meditations and I mean, but we're going so far as to building communities um, we're planning and, and building 
um, communities and the, the way they're set up, garden communities and um, communities that are built differently, um, built more thoughtfully um, for health and wellness, um, eliminating VOCs, eliminating exposures, all those little things that we don't really think about until we get to a drastic point of, you know, crisis place. And then we start thinking about, you know, the chemicals we're breathing, the plastics we're wearing, you know, all that stuff. And when you want to change those things, if I wanted to change to, you know, wearing organic clothes, because, you know, again, things people don't understand is that's affecting our children's endocrine system because they're wearing Absolutely. polyester and plastic that's in and, their bloodstream. And I'm just going to jump in here. I have 100%, 100%, you know, part of functional medicine when the, when you have resistant or unexplained chronic illness, blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, they basically, it's not a question of how many more drugs you need. Let's find out about heavy metals. Let's find that's about, right. uh, you know, the, let's say the toxins in the plastics. In other words, uh, uh, if, my God, there's so much, yeah. pollution out there uh, and yeah. uh, eliminate decrease the damage uh, by the way uh, i did want to mention briefly you know we do only have, only have one hour and we'll come back to some of these topics but i do want to uh, say uh, actually dad uh, uh, if you'd like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of our friends and uh, uh, well partners here in town well, if you in springfield you want to go to coloma and good tart cherries, you said, only place in Springfield. But one of the places, Spring Valley Natural Foods, they carry all of our products except the pit device. But the bliss oils, the magnesium lotion, every, everything else is available at Spring Valley. And they serve you as you walk in the door. Somebody comes out and, and offers you help to find something out of 10,000 items. So. Wonderful. Uh, and I, I love the place. I mean, it really, it's, 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 it's good. one of the concise, great service uh, that and I do visit. Uh, and, and I want to mention Mother's Day. We have a special 15% off on everything in our store. Pimp device, bliss oils, U formula, essentials. Well, uh, there's also Scalar, all of our devices, yeah. and basically lots of other yeah. different, different things. So we're talking about modalities. Now, I just want to be, make very clear, uh, in, in a holistic world, ultimately, and I'm, I'll be very transparent, if uh, I, and after, I've had a couple of near-death out-of-body experiences, so to me, the physical reality is very harsh, uh, in other words, in terms of, uh, you know, coming back, and, and I've, I've had to drop back into this physical body several occasions. Leah, you've had several experiences. Many, we, many, many. Many, many. So, we, and we've got, uh, you know, quite a few uh, that we, well, so, some, if we start talking about it, it'll, you know, it might be a little yeah, too whole much. Another hour, a whole nother hour, whole nother show. Uh, one thing, I can talk about that forever. Oh, and we did. We were like, at one point, I, I looked at the watch or so, and it was like, we're having a three and a half hour conversation. My God. Yeah. And we're still not barely getting into it. So, my, yeah. well, uh, so the, the what, what, what I learned uh, is, uh, it's all the physical manifest manifested world is part of the reality. So I'm not going to ignore the fact that if I crash a vehicle at over 100 mile an hour, which which is what happened, my my spine is not going to be you know happy. In other words, let's put it this way. Short of it, a little reference to 2021 March accident where stupidity, so on and so forth, and uh, you know burst fracture L3. That's a reality. Recovery was a reality getting back to my feet being uh, you know again i'm into martial arts other people have their spoils uh, or their their you know point and things that they like norm likes gardening you know he wouldn't do martial arts but for me again you know it's it is what i like and i got back into and i just i'm testing very soon for uh, for, for another aspect of the brown belt next to the black belt in a new system and i'm barely supposed to be walking so again mm -hmm. the physical reality is a matter but it's also that we don't have to play by the rules that we're given that's what i'm yeah. saying because the rules that we're given is by society i did a show uh, a podcast at some point about a matrix mm -hmm. matrix and in this matrix uh, again is it a lie yes is there a lie in many ways it's a lie in multi-dimensional aspects Everything I know, everything I was taught literally is a lie. Everything from organizations, governments, uh, uh, everything man-made. At this mm -hmm. point, I'm at a place where, and again, I'll just say it because it's my perspective and, you know, uh, I'm interested in God-made laws. I'm interested yeah. in, 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 in divine laws. I'm interested in the laws of uh, 
uh, of humanity, not of, of human mind, human ego, and otherwise. And that right. applies to medicine, uh, uh, well, everything, literally. That being yeah. said, you cannot ignore the physical. You cannot. That's right. Absolutely. And if you and there are people who basically swim in that in those worlds in the spiritual and the positive and I'm you know, but you don't follow through or you don't pay attention to the to, to the issues and when something happens something happens address it. If I didn't address mm -hmm. the spine injury, I would be paralyzed. That's uh, right. that's that's that, that's the short of it. Absolutely. So, yeah, so, you know, uh, I think I think so often. Well, not so often. I mean, all uh, people will say. Um, you know, religion and science, you know, shouldn't be mixed. Well, you know, when I talk about uh, the story of Joseph, I'm not talking about religion and I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about a historical event that took place. And when the Pharaoh remembered the God of Joseph and, and what is that, you know, then it was well for his people and there was peaceful times. And it would have been foolish of him to, to hear of this person, Joseph, and hear what may be coming and ignore it, right? So prophecy is not for us to, um, it's not a prediction, right? It's something we can change. So mm -hmm. when he's prophesied that this was going to come material, so energetically he's seeing these things, and it's not going to come to the material world for seven years. But it was it was good for the Pharaoh to say, let me listen to what you're saying, maybe just in the off chance that you might be telling me something that you're actually seeing. And he followed through. And then when another Pharaoh comes up and says, you know, I don't believe any of that hogwash. Well, it wasn't well for the people and it wasn't well for, for the, for the neighboring people. And it wasn't well for himself. It wasn't well for his, even his own family. And so as a result of being foolish and trying to separate energy or spirit from material, you know, we, there are real consequences to that. And that's not punishment. Those are just, it's just a cause and effect. Those are universal laws. We just have to understand that. And when we come to a place of understanding and we can apply that wisdom into action, like not just something I read in a book. It's not just something I, I hear from. Norm could tell me all day long how to get well. And I could go tell other people I know how to get well. But if I don't do it, it's, I, I, I will, I'm not, <laughs> you know, the, I'm not going to experience it. Wisdom is only knowledge. <laughs> so, you know, knowledge is what you read and that's uh, useless. Yeah. <laughs> Wisdom is when you apply it. Now you're exactly. wise. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So we talk about this 15% sale. Why do we, you know, you ask, you know, like, uh, why do we do sales when we, when there's a spiritual world and so on? And, and that's, and that's a much, much more important reality. Well, uh, how else uh, do, do humans get motivated other than that to do the things that are good for them? In other words, yeah. uh, I wish there was a better way, you know, but again, yeah. you know, it's a, uh, if you're going to do something, uh, you know, and Mother's Day is, uh, you know, is, is, a, is a beautiful time to address creation and because this is about creation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know. Hey, uh, everything that's good for your health, uh, why not? I want to mention my favorite device. Yes, sir. Ouch. Ah, Doctor ah. Shilly. Yes, yes, yes. Let's listen. This is actually very mm -hmm. interesting. I had my calcium score done yesterday. I don't know the result yet. Yes, sir. But I, I believe that I have reduced the calcium score. From twenty eight hundred to two hundred or less, it cures hypertension. I can state this at this point. It's uh, I haven't proven it in science, but it, it shows no blood pressure in people who wear it. A leather pouch with crushed sapphire in it. Wonderful, wonderful. But okay, this is where uh, the oversight the thought police steps in because I don't want, want us to get in trouble. We are a wellness facility. We don't cure anything dead. We don't. Uh... <laughs> oh, let me translate. Well, so... There is, but uh, I'm, I'm, let me re 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 replay, mm -hmm. uh, replace uh, 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 some of the wording so that we are proper and, 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 and clear. Mm -hmm. While we do not claim to cure anything or anybody, uh, there's an interesting potential in a research in process on whether a sapphire pouch, sapphire is a, uh, when it's crushed, uh, it will actually uh, have, it's, it's like a watch. Yeah, when you have a watch, uh, it, it, it runs on, on, <clears throat> on crystal. Again, laser 
laser focused runs on crystal so it's basically uh, collecting amplifying and putting out energy that's all there's to it energy so i can speak as a patient of norm yeah. and you know he he never claimed to cure me he never claimed to make anything better <laughs> but he did say if you do have this issue let's try this and when i tried that and I, and so Sergey, you and I have talked about my blood pressures, you know, so yes. my meetings got very busy. I'm, I'm very busy now. I'm, I'm, you know, trying to um, even change the clothing and change this and change <laughs> that. But my blood pressure got to a very um, a scary place. And so I had a stroke um, a while, a couple of years ago, um, just, you know, stress levels and things and kind of stepping out of my, all my normal stuff, you know, forgetting to take my nutraceuticals, oh, not wearing the no. pimp device and, you know, or forgetting it somewhere, not having it for a week, you know, things like that. And then my, my meetings got really busy. Stress levels got high. Um, so my blood pressure got to a very dangerous level again. And I was very, very concerned. Well, I do have your adenoscalar device. And so I typically keep it in a neutral place in our, in our house, but I put it in my bedroom because I wanted it by me all night long while I was sleeping. And then I was remembering again, I've got to do the PEMF device. I've got to keep it with me. And even because I'm, even though I'm feeling better, it doesn't mean stop the daily things. Right. And so I, I did all that. Um, and, um, was remembering my nutraceuticals again. And I will say as a patient who was not told they were going to be cured of anything, I applied these suggestions um, <laughs> of Dr. Steely's and I do not have high blood pressure and I am not on high blood pressure medication. So was I cured of high blood pressure? You know, that's to be determined, it's that's, gone. you know, the label opinion, is gone. whatever, but yeah. it's gone. Right. <laughs> and even the modalities, look, you're, you're the cell on, on for your mother's day sales. That's fabulous. It's, it's, you know, when we know that the energy from the sun is healing, we know that a particular molecular state of water and sacred healing water in California is healing. If people don't have access to that, then they can know it all day long. And I can tell them on the radio show all day long. But until someone brilliant like Norm comes along and, and creates a device where I can have the energy of the sun or of the, you know, the sun passing through crystals and rocks, all that's measurable. That's mm -hmm. science. That's not hoopla, you know, whatever. And um, then I can wear that device and to put a sale on that so that more people can afford it, or maybe it brings it to their attention. You're putting it out there, marketing it. Be that is so that people have access to their healing. If, if we are in environments in our world, look, we've, like you said, we've got to face it. Today's world is what it is, right? So we've got all these problems. What's the solution? We can't Makes all sense. move to the mountains and bathe in sacred water, right? But I can create a device that allows sacred water in your home. And if I need to put a sail on it for Mother's Day so that you can have <laughs> sacred water and healing, then what a blessing, right? And what oh, a blessing. God. So, yeah. Absolutely. And thank you. Uh, this is wonderful. Now, we do have a couple of questions. So let's jump, uh, jump uh, right into that. Yeah, Leah, you are incredible. Thank uh, you. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, question. Uh, Dr. Norm uh, Sergey uh, and Sergey. Okay. Uh, is there a newer version of PMF device that fits around the neck versus needing to wear a baseball cap? Uh, it would be easier for uh, for me. Okay. So yes, uh, most people can actually work around baseball cap. We had a guest uh, on the podcast, Dr. Kenneken, who's uh, you know, he's a bio, um, well, um, strength uh, champion, one of the strength uh, com competitors, just a really big, strong guy. So he he couldn't fit it around his head. But you know, most other folks generally don't have any trouble. Now, uh, the the ring is designed with a certain size, just because again, it's uh, we, we don't want it to be too loose, and it also needs to be go needs to be able to go around their extremities if you have a specific area concern, or in, and it's portable. It's easy, uh, but uh, the uh, you don't necessarily have to have it around the neck. Uh, in other words, you can kind of wrap it around, kind of wear it like a scarf. I mean, there's so many different ways. Uh, and yes, there's a new version of the device and there's another question coming up. There's an older version of the PEMF and there's a newer version of PEMF. We don't make the older version anymore. Uh, Dr. Shilly originally came up with a with a sweep mode, which is, the, we're talking about the PEMF unit, uh, which literally only had the Schumann frequency only. <laughs> 
what is Schumann frequency? It's the heartbeat of the earth. It's a support. It supports everything in the cell and uh, uh, literally just it's a recharger for the for, for the entire organism, to say the least. Uh, and uh, along the way, we noticed several things. And we, Dr. Shili, again, you know, I, I don't know how he does what he does, but uh, I think I know how he does what he does. It's just not in human language. Uh, it's uh, he got he got another download again to utilize something called gamma frequency, 40 cycles per second, which uh, you know the meditator's mind, brain, and he's been talking about it for 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 a while. So he said, okay, we're gonna put another another mode in, which is gamma, and that's for the brain, brain optimization, and depression, anxiety, addiction, all that stuff, control center. And then uh, that's this is I'll take some credit for this because I you know I was some somewhat involved. Uh, the, the third mode it was was my was my, my idea and, and I introduced it based on my experience with if you're gonna uh, if you have something that's to recharge and then you have something to optimize I said <clears throat> if we're gonna rebuild the device let's build in something that's going to allow you to come down because you also need to to sleep reset yeah. you can't be just on that's that's what I that's what I would do all day and all night if I didn't have again if I didn't work on what I was working on so Delta yeah. is zero to three cycles per second and kind of cycles through. Uh, you get ready and, and you need your rest, of course. Or if there's too much activity, too many squirrels going on, boom, mm -hmm. just get it. And that's uh, so that's a new device, absolutely. And yeah. Uh, any uh, other questions, please? Uh, to optimize fast healing for sprains, injuries for my dogs and myself, is it best for the use EMF that can be placed on the site? At the site of the or for the focus treatment, yes. Uh, the closer, the better. The dist the further away, it's the square of the inverse. In other words, uh, it, keep it close. That's the short of it. Uh, well, I'll say one of my boys broke his leg, and it, you know, six to nine weeks healing, right? And then I had him wear the the PEMF device every single day, and it was it was right at three weeks. His cast was off and the doctor, again, you know, the doctors are baffled and I'm always saying, you got to meet this doctor. He's amazing. I'm oh, always, yeah. I'm like evangelizing Norm in everything. Well, I, th <laughs> yeah, I, th so, I think there's so a good, good reason say, for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It, it, it works. It works. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Is there, uh, let's go to... Uh, Oh, uh, this is what we talked about, the, uh, the calcium score. And uh, if you call the clinic and if you're interested in learning a way where you, you know, without doing a stress test or going under the knife, if you want to know where your heart uh, health is, uh, we can find out how much calcium and how likely you are to have a certain type of a heart event. Uh, and not every kind of type of heart event, but there's some that are very sudden despite clean vessels. But uh, if you're in trouble on calcium score, then we, we, we need to talk. And it bypasses bypass surgery. Uh, we actually got a trademark on that bypass to bypass surgery. Boom. All right. That's great. Actually, Dad said this, and I'm like, okay, if Dad says that, I'm going with it. I'm not questioning Absolutely. anything he said. Everything he's put his hands on, boom. <laughs> oh, uh, I agree. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> my dad. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I just feel like I've I've been so motivated by so many people and inspired, you know, and just the breath of God breathed into my life through their actions and activity. And I mean, if I can help one person not have to face crisis, I mean, what else are we here for? Right. You know, it, there's just no better way to live the rest of my life. I think there was an expression uh, um, or, or one of the lines from from a Schindler's List, the movie, uh, and uh, uh, basically you can see if it's something about if you can save one life, you save the world. Uh, that's right. I think we're going to do more than that here. That's Absolutely. My, that's my feeling. I agree. I agree. I agree. Mm, thank you. Um, I think unless there is a, oh, uh, uh, of course, now they're talking about all, all this great stuff. How do you, how do we follow you? Uh, and we're going to actually, we're going to put a link uh, for, uh, for how to, um, it's LinkedIn.com and there's a process there. Uh, Leah, is there any other way that you'd like people to connect with you? Uh, and you've got so many projects and we're collaborating on a number of things. Uh, and I'm, 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 I'm honored to be a part of the foundation, you know, just uh, the work that you do, the foundations yeah. and the, uh, it's it's uh, really I got no words. Uh, it's uh, you've taken this work and it's literally God sent. Uh, we're here with you 100. percent Well, thank you again. If you know if you ask the angels to use you, 
they're going to use you. So you We're better in. be ready. Be We're prepared. In. <laughs> Let's fly. <Yes. laughs> they're going to talk. If you ask them questions and you expect an answer, you better be listening because they're talking. All and right. so, I'll get um, my wings on. Let's get it going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it'll take you places and teach you things for sure. And so, you know, I think as we unfold these communities, um, a different way of living, a different, there's the, the LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so LinkedIn is, is it for now. Um, eventually I'll do an, an Instagram and a Facebook, but yeah, we do have a number of projects going on. And again, it's, it's just, I, I don't, I don't, um, want more companies to make more money. i I want every way of healing accessible to everyone. I want to send it to other countries. I want to make it available. I want to change the way we're building cities and the way we're doing the school systems, the way we're doing the incarceration systems, you know, the homeless facilities, the immigrant communities, we should be building communities. So there's so many projects we're working on. We've got some impact investors that are working closely with us that have a heart for humanity, a heart for kids and a heart for change. A lot of philanthropic dollars that are backing this up. And so, yeah, we're, we'd be excited if you follow us and just kind of watch it unfold with us in any way anybody wants to be involved or can be involved or just your prayers. Look, not just your prayers, excuse me. Your that's prayers, so that's, that's an so investment. Powerful. And we oh. are grateful for them. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I just want to say, so if you want to follow us, uh, and uh, I'm just going to read this because I... Uh, uh, Please make sure to follow and subscribe to Shirley Soren Wellness. There's a there's a follow on Facebook and Instagram, and I guess I'm not I don't I'm not a technology buff, but uh, there's also subscribe on YouTube. And our team is fantastic. Now we're going to be working uh, with uh, with Leah. Uh, this is a this is we well, we started within within a year, and this is just the beginning of a long term project. So We've got a lot things. coming. I'm excited uh, about it all. We're gonna uh, you know. Uh, just to uh, be a little bit over time, but I just want to say in this world, in our world, there's spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, and there's actually on the ground and, and there's good and bad. Oh, people say that, you know, and, uh, you know, angels and devils, but you know, you, however you want to say it, if you, if, if you do the right thing, shine the light, light, yeah. love, truth, that's all there is to it. And that's my closing yeah. statements. Dad, anything else on your end? That's it. Leah? All the way. Just like Norm says, every thought is a prayer. We've we've got to think our way through it, talk our way through it, and do our way through it. And, and then we get there. So thank you both for everything anyway. you do. So grateful for you both. I I owe you my life. <laughs> my kids <laughs> owe you my life. Blessings. Mutual. Thank you. Thank you.